The second the bombs went off in Boston last Monday, patriots, pinkos, and anarchists alike cried foul. As with any major terrorist plot executed against Americans on American soil, eyebrows were raised and skeptics were born. Here's a list of the top 10 reasons why these fringe members of society might be onto something. Number one, an anonymous 4chan user posted on the site Monday making several predictions. Paraphrasing, he said, quote, laws are being written to screw you. They will pin this on a male, late teens to early 20s. They are going to say he used reloading power for the explosion and that reloading powder shouldn't be for sale to the public. They won't find the suspects till later this week and the raid is issued to occur on Friday. This is a stage event. It appears several of these claims are true. Number two, a strange man in a battle dress uniform was photographed holding something peculiar. On close inspection, however, it was just a device used to detect radiation. Number three, four other men in battle dress uniforms with suspected craft connections. These men are associated with an organization whose slogan is, violence does solve problems. And on that note, number four, bomb backpacks resemble those worn by the craft. The evidence on this is merely circumstantial and visual, but take a look at these comparative photos put together by Natural News Mike Adams. Number five, Chris Kyle, legendary American sniper and creator of Kraft, was gunned down on February 2nd. Did Chris Kyle catch wind of some government contract he didn't want any part of and so had to be silenced? A lot of internet sensationalists find it highly unlikely that such a decorated man could be picked off so easily. Number six, officials knew about the threat. Quote, they kept making announcements to the participants, do not worry, it's just a training exercise, said Coach Allie Stevenson to NBC's West Florida affiliate, Local 15. Stevenson said he saw law enforcement spotters on the roofs at the start of the race. He's been in plenty of marathons in Chicago, D.C., Chicago, London, and other metropolitan areas, but he's never seen that level of security before. Number seven, two cars, one coexist bumper sticker. On the night of April 17th, the two bombing suspects, Tamerlan and Zokar Sarnev, reportedly shot and killed MIT police officer Sean Coolier. It was then reported that they carjacked a vehicle and drove to Watertown, where they were met by police and engaged in a firefight. The vehicle to Sarnev's carjack was described by police as a Mercedes SUV. Here's a picture of the carjack car immediately following the end of the firefight, after Zokar escaped from the scene. It is not a Mercedes SUV. However, later media accounts posted this photo of the purportedly carjacked car, lo and behold, a Mercedes SUV. It is also interesting to note, in the first image, immediately after the firefight, the car bears a coexist bumper sticker on its rear, while the image of the Mercedes does not. Number 8. Previous FBI inquiry into Tamerlan and Sarnev had found nothing. It stands to question that if our own federally accredited investigation bureau, with seemingly unlimited resources, couldn't find anything substantial to claims that Tamerlan had become a radicalized jihadist Muslim, then how did this happen in such a few short years? Number nine, mom claims it's a setup. In an interview with the BBC, the Sarnav brother's mother, Zubide Sarnav, denies that her sons could have possibly carried out the attacks. She claims it was a setup. Number 10, a false flag attack. The United States government doesn't have the best track record with its citizens. Operation Northwoods is probably one of the better known proposed false flag operations to be committed on U.S. soil. In the 1962 proposal, it was put forward that attacks be committed in U.S. cities under the guise of Cuba to help aid public support in a war against them. Fortunately, President Kennedy and his administration nixed the whole idea. Unfortunately for President Kennedy, he was assassinated within a year after the rejection. Now this is just an example of a rejected false flag operation. Think about how many are actually accepted. What do you think? Is all this just total BS from paranoid crazies who distrust everything the government says? Or is there some truth in there? Is there more here than we're being told? However you feel, start a conversation in the comments below.